health or commercial interests. Could we consider these terms to show the confrontation between the Uruguayan state and one of the world's leading producers of tobacco? Uruguay has taken serious actions against the tobacco industry due to the death of more than 5,000 Uruguayans each year caused by diseases associated with the use of tobacco. The measures have done much harm to the tobacco producers. The small South American country, with the population of 3 million people, has brought a lawsuit against one of the largest tobacco producing companies in the world, Philip Morris. Uruguay is defending its right to ban tobacco related commercial practices in order to improve the health of its own citizens. In the meantime, Philip Morris is fighting for its right to do business, which they believe has been violated. Meanwhile, the world is paying attention to the dispute. Whatever the outcome, the decision will be a milestone concerning countries' right to fight against smoking. Today, in Latin America, the last natural frontier, the case of the state of Uruguay versus Philip Morris, what would be the consequences internationally, regardless of the verdict? What kind of statements has the state made in its fight against smoking? What are Philip Morris's demands? And what does it want in exchange? It causes disease and death. Half of the consumers die prematurely. In general, not only Philip Morris, the whole industry complains about the size and type of the image. We know that. The larger the image is, the more impact it has. Uruguay is a South American country with a population of just over 3 million. The country is well known for its football achievements and good life quality but it's also known for being a pioneer in the fight against tobacco. Since 2006, smoking is banned in public places and actions against tobacco advertising have been the most aggressive ones in the region. On February 19, 2010, Philip Morris called for arbitration to settle the dispute with Uruguay by the help of the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes, ICSID. Philip Morris states that the Uruguayan government has gone too far with its anti-tobacco regulations by exceeding the permitted trade and violating its rights. This is not a simple case. International eyes are watching the case since the outcome will indicate how far governments can impose policies to improve the health of their citizens and how far commercial interest can push. But this is not the only important case at the moment involving tobacco producing companies. Around the world, there are disputes over tobacco mainly to know whether preventive measures can slow down demands for tobacco and reduce the side effects of smoking. Compared to other countries, Uruguay has not focused on just taking tobacco-making companies and distributors to court. Its main focus is to put restrictions on tobacco advertisements and trades. Accordingly, Philip Morris claims its rights have been violated. According to Dr. Eduardo Lefkowitz, a representative of the National Health Organization in Uruguay, this is just a test what the producer of tobacco and cigarettes are doing in Uruguay.
I think what they're doing in Uruguay is a pilot test. There is much exchange among countries, and we know that the same battle is taking place in Australia, New Zealand, and England too. Then maybe it is a strategy of the company's legal department to see how it goes in a clash with a small country like Uruguay and then apply it to others. In March 2005, Tabara Vescas became Uruguay's first leftist president with the background of an oncologist. From the beginning of his term, he put all kinds of measures to prohibit smoking among Uruguayans, as announced in February of 2006 by the public health minister, Dr. Maria Julia Munoz. The country has imposed a ban on smoking indoors, and it also takes all necessary measures to reduce the number of smokers and reminding them that smoking causes diseases, such as cardiovascular, which most Uruguayans die of, as well as cancer, especially lung cancer. These actions didn't go unnoticed outside the country. And not only they got congratulations from around the world, but also an international lawsuit filed by the world leading tobacco company, Philip Morris International, against Uruguay. We didn't rule it out because we are aware of cigarette companies' interests in different parts of the world. They are very strong and making billions of dollars every year. We didn't rule out a problem such as this, but we did not either imagine that the company would react in such a strong and fierce way against Uruguay. This is the story of a conflict, a legal battle between a country and a huge company, an instance that can affect the future of trade and health policies anywhere in the world. That's how the prestigious international lawyer and referee Fernando Jimenez of Arachaga and the director of tobacco control program Dr. Winston Abascal explain the matter. The practical interest in this case is that if Philip Morris eventually comes to win, the company is likely to encourage similar actions against other larger and more important countries which have applied substantially similar procedures as Uruguay in the fight against smoking. In March 2005, Tabara Vesquez became president of the Oriental Republic of Uruguay and he made Uruguay the first country in Latin America to be 100% smoke-free indoors, both publicly and privately. On the other side is tobacco giant Philip Morris, present in 180 countries and holds 16% of the world's cigarette market, excluding the United States. The company is the leader of 13 markets and second in 10 of the 30 largest. Some of the country's brands are the most recognized in the world, such as Marlboro, and has 78,000 employees worldwide. This is the case. From the very beginning of his administration in 2005, the imprint of the new Uruguayan president has been felt. Barely two months in office, Tabara Vesquez spoke as part of the smokeless global day. I am speaking as the President of the Republic. 
doctor, and moreover, as a former smoker. This president and oncologist addressed some of the consequences of smoking, and the figures that reported during his speech were not only alarming, but also gave measures to fight against the smoking problem. Tobacco and its smoke contains over 400 chemicals, including 43 carcinogens and many other products that are toxic. Among these compounds, the following are found. Nicotine is an addictive drug. Acetone, ammonia, benzene, butane, cyanide, double DT, an illegal insecticide, was detected in the study of components of tobacco. Formaldehyde. For those unaware of the term formaldehyde, it is a substance used to preserve corpses. Methanol, which is the fuel used for aircraft, carbon monoxide, and naphthalene. A person who smokes a packet of cigarettes a day takes a quart of tar per year. Tobacco is known as a probable cause of approximately 25 diseases, including coronary heart disease, 30% incidence, pulmonary emphysema, 80 to 90% incidence, and cancer, 30% incidence. All diseases caused by the use of tobacco. Smoking is undeniably responsible for 95 to 96 of bronchipulmonary cancers. In Uruguay, three people a day die from lung cancer due to smoking. Three people a day. It is responsible for 70% of cases of larginal cancer, 50% of cases of oral cavity mouth, is responsible for 50% of cases of esophageal cancer, 40% of bladder cancer cases, and 30% of pancreatic cancers, in addition to 42% of children with chronic respiratory diseases whose parents are smokers. Babies and children of smokers are four times more exposed to sudden death syndrome than children of non-smokers. Teens and young smokers have, on average, lung capacity and muscular structure 10% lower than the young non-smokers. Recent studies show the relationship between smoking and pneumonia, smoking and cataracts, smoking and leukemia myelinoid, smoking and cervical cancer in women. Armed with this information, the Uruguayan government undertook a crusade to drastically reduce the level of smoking in the population. And I remember precisely that to address this issue in a cabinet meeting. He said, just imagine what would happen if there were everyday accidents in the main streets of any city, in this case Montevideo, at the intersection of a very popular street, there were three fatal traffic accidents that killed three people, today three people died, and tomorrow, and a day after tomorrow. Someone should ask, what is happening, and what can we do to avoid this? This was precisely what happened with the smoking situation in Uruguay. With Tabara Vasquez as president and Maria in the Uruguayan Ministry of Public Health, they launched a series of measures and became one of the countries in the world and the first in Latin America to be 100% smoke-free in indoor spaces. The measure was launched on the 1st of March 2006. One year after Vasquez took the presidency. So the news was announced on Uruguayan Channel 10. Within hours, Uruguay is going to become the South American country with no indoor smoking, both public and private areas. From midnight, people are allowed to smoke only outdoors or in private homes or in the car. The government announced that it will bring to the streets 170 inspectors. Will it be enough? 
to control the enforcement of the measure, the minimum penalty is $1,000. Publicist Diego Pinero, one of the creators of the campaign against smoking in Uruguay, remembers how indoor spaces in the country became fully smoke-free. The original measure that came from the recommendation of the Council into the Framework Agreement is that spaces for smokers and non-smokers must be separated. This, in general, has internationally begun to be installed. And Uruguay had the problem of small businesses, warehouses, confectionery stores, in which there wasn't the possibility of putting two doors or dividing the space into two parts. On the other hand, some staff were facing problems too. A serving staff saying, I'm a waiter, I do not smoke, but I do work in an environment that is full of smoke. This is bothering me. And that changed the life of Uruguayans. Me acuerdo cuando comenzó la provisión, a mí me pareció un evento muy bueno porque yo fumo, porque soy adicta a la nicotina, no porque tengo ganas de fumar. La verdad que fue un cambio muy bueno para los no fumadores como yo, porque nos sentimos mucho más cómodos, realmente empezamos a sentir más libertad, porque para el que no fuma el humo del cigarro realmente es muy molesto. La verdad que, que me molestó bastante. No, no, no me gustó el hecho de que me prohibieran ejercer una de las cosas más lindas que tengo, que es el pucho, que es mi compañero. Lo único que uno tuvo que al principio adaptarse fue buscar algún restaurante o algún boliche que tuviese algún lugar para fumadores, alguna área abierta, y bueno, hubo que tratar de acostumbrarse a eso. Y después me di cuenta que, que estuvo bien, porque en los boliches ibas a comer... Te queda todo con olor a humo. Del punto de vista eh, laboral, por ejemplo, uno cuando entraba a un local comercial, a veces hasta se sentía el olor a cigarrillo en el ambiente, que da un aspecto cierta suciedad y hoy por hoy eso ya no existe más, eso quedó, quedó en el pasado. The first step was already introduced by the Uruguayan government in 2003 during the administration of Dr. Jorge Valle, when the framework agreement of the World Health Organization for Tobacco Control was signed and ratified. 179 countries have signed the framework agreement of the convention, which anticipates a series of measures over time. Uruguay is one of the first countries to sign the framework convention on tobacco control. This is the first public health treaty in the history of mankind. It means that Uruguay acquired certain objections agreed to obey in front of the international community. The smoking problem was, and considered by the Uruguayan state, not just a social problem, but also an enormous economic problem that had to be solved. statements has the state made in its fight against smoking? What are Philip Morris's demands? And what does it want in exchange?
It causes disease and death. Half of the consumers die prematurely. In general, not only Philip Morris, the whole industry complains about the size and type of the image. We know that. The larger the image is, the more impact it has. Uruguay is a South American country with a population of just over 3 million. The country is well known for its football achievements and good life quality, but it's also known for being a pioneer in the fight against tobacco. Since 2006, smoking is banned in public places and actions against tobacco advertising have been the most aggressive ones in the region. On February 19, 2010, Philip Morris called for arbitration to settle the dispute with Uruguay by the help of the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes, ICSID. Philip Morris states that the Uruguayan government has gone too far with its anti-tobacco regulations by exceeding the permitted trade and violating its rights. This is not a simple case. health or commercial interests. Could we consider these terms to show the confrontation between the Uruguayan state and one of the world's leading producers of tobacco? Uruguay has taken serious actions against the tobacco industry due to the death of more than 5,000 Uruguayans each year caused by diseases associated with the use of tobacco. The measures have done much harm to the tobacco producers. The small South American country, with the population of 3 million people, has brought a lawsuit against one of the largest tobacco producing companies in the world, Philip Morris. Uruguay is defending its right to ban tobacco related commercial practices in order to improve the health of its own citizens. In the meantime, Philip Morris is fighting for its right to do business, which they believe has been violated. Meanwhile, the world is paying attention to the dispute. Whatever the outcome, the decision will be a milestone concerning countries' right to fight against smoking. Today, in Latin America, the last natural frontier, the case of the state of Uruguay versus Philip Morris, what would be the consequences internationally, regardless of the verdict? What kind of